Yes. It's finally time. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Story Mode. If you are new here, hello, my name is Dan, and this is a highly accelerated, story-focused playthrough of Final Fantasy XIV. We have already played through the base game and the first two expansions, and now we have arrived at what most fans agree is the best expansion, and secretly the best Final Fantasy story, period, Shadowbringers. This is the expansion that compelled me to start this enormous endeavor of a playthrough, and I am beside myself with excitement to finally reach this point, you have no idea. Now, as is customary, let us kick things off with the Shadowbringers trailer cinematic, which is a heck of a thing. Enjoy! have come and gone since that day. How many years have I waited for this moment? For the one that stood alone against the storm. they called. The warrior of light. from my troubles. Until our friend returns, I will hold the line. Ugh. 
This town certainly has changed, and not at all for the better. We are in for a good time, everyone. Now, before we get started, two quick things. One, if you want to watch everything we've played through so far, I have a link to the complete series playlist down in the description, and I do recommend experiencing the game story up to this point first if you haven't, because otherwise this is gonna kind of feel like skipping straight to season four of a plot-heavy TV series. And two, let's all be considerate and avoid posting spoilers in the comment section. There are a lot of people watching this series who have not played this game themselves, and I would not want to rob anyone of that first-time experience. So, let's all be courteous and not ruin it for anybody. But okay, that's it, let's get logged in. Dermot is waiting for us! And here we... Um... Dirt buddy, what's with the death mask? Why, why are you wearing this? It's kind of creepy, bud. Do you think maybe you could lose the hood for me? Just real quick. I'd appreciate it. It's just, it's a little unsettled. Hey, look at you! Still haven't made time to get that haircut yet, huh? That's okay, buddy. You look fine. Hey, maybe don't wear that hood anymore, all right? It's very unsettling. I don't know why Tataru made it like that. Maybe she's working through some stuff right now. Things have been a little stressful around the Rising Stones lately, haven't they? Speaking of which, it has been a little while since we wrapped up Stormblood. Maybe a quick refresher on recent events would be helpful. Ahem. <clears throat> Previously on Story Mode... Things are looking pretty bleak for the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. While scrambling to help the recently liberated Alamigo prepare for an imminent Garlean counterattack, the members of the Scions begin experiencing these sudden, painful disturbances, piercing headaches, visions, and always a strange voice warning them of some impending calamity that must be averted, every time pleading to throw wide the gates. After each one of these episodes, one of the Scions was left comatose. First Thancred, then Yishtola and Dorianje, then Alphano, and then Alise. In the middle of our fight to defend Alamigo, Derman fell unconscious and found himself in a strange void with the owner of this voice. This stranger insisted that our current fight was meaningless, that Oblivion was coming regardless of the battle's outcome, and that our only hope of averting this crisis was to join him in a place called the First, one of the mysterious shards of this world we're occasionally hearing about. He said he'd left us a beacon at the base of the Crystal Tower, which can help us to find our way there. And that basically brings us up to now. The Empire has been repelled from Alamigo for the moment, at least, and the remaining Scions have been racing to help us locate this strange beacon, while Kryle tries to care for our comatose friends. And you're pretty much caught up. 
Let's go ahead and get Shadowbringers kicked off, shall we? And check on Tataru. See how she's doing. I'm a Dark Knight now, by the way. It felt appropriate for the expansion to be a Dark Knight. Also sort of matches the costume which Tataru made for us, including the... the whatever's going on here. I'd love an explanation for this someday, Tataru. I'm not going to ask right now. We're all stressed. How are you? Tataru is itching to share what appears to be good news. Ooh. At last. Good news, Derman. We've had a stroke of luck in our search for that beacon. Apparently, our colleagues have stumbled across a hidden path leading down into the hollows around the base of the Crystal Tower. A path I doubt we'd ever have found had the Ironworks and the Suns not added their numbers to the party. Thanks to them, we have eager eyes aplenty down there, checking under rocks and peering into every nook and cranny. Still, it sounds like there's a lot of ground to cover. Hmm. It does sound like tedious work, but we better go and give a hand. It's important. My thoughts exactly. The sooner we find this beacon, the sooner you can travel to wherever it is this mysterious voice is coming from. And the sooner we can work out how to help our friends. We have to find a way to wake them up, and before the Empire comes calling again. Meaning, we have no time to lose. Couldn't have said it better myself. There's a boat in North Silvertier waiting to ferry people to the site, so let's be on our way. And hey, there's that new Shadowbringers quest accepted music. Always takes a little getting used to at the start of each expansion. <laughs> Hearing the new quest music. You get used to it pretty fast, though. All right, let's, you know what? Let's go ahead and break out the snap travel early. We're kind of in a rush. Here we are. It's pretty laid out. Pretty nice starry evening. In Mordona. And not cloudy for once. Nice view of the tower and everything. Anyway. Heading to the survey site, sir. It's on the eastern shore of the lake, and the swiftest way to get there is by boat. Yes, please. Oh, look at the whole operation out here. Hori, how's it going? Dermon! The search continues, but I have no doubt we shall find this beacon of yours. Appreciate it. There's a lot of you out here. Ironworks technologist. The Ironworks is out in force. Master Garland's orders. And the Sons of St. Quinoc. That towering edifice is the outer wall of the Crystal Tower's foundation. The labyrinth of the ancients, to be precise. I remember. Boy, it's been a while since we were in there, huh? The air weighs heavily upon me. Tis little wonder, I suppose, when standing in the shadow of such an imposing structure. It big. The Archons need our help. Next to that, even matters of the heart don't seem to matter. I'm glad you're focused, relatively speaking. I've detected no slavering beasts in the vicinity. My sister accepted. <laughs> I enjoy their dynamic. Anyway, sorry, Tataru. What's up? Anything that seems the least bit device-like, and we'll make ourselves a pile. Well, if it isn't the hero of the hour, maybe you'll change our look. We found bugger all without you. Figs! Wedge! Hey, fellas. Aye, aye. Well, we could hardly say no to a call for aid from the Scions. Jesse call it the chief of some other business. So we'll be working twice as hard to make up for his not being here. I can't think of a time you guys haven't been working some multiplier of hard, or harder than usual. 
I'm starting to worry about you. Thrice as hard, even. Not helping, Wedge. <sighs> Thank you, both of you. I'm sure we'll find that beacon in no time. <sighs> I'm not seeing anything out here. Do you reckon you could squeeze in there, Wedge? And get stuck halfway? No, thank you. I could try if you like. Tataru, no! We couldn't ask you to do that. Oh, I'll be fine. This receptionist is not afraid to get her hands dirty. Please no, Tataru. Sorry, I, I meant to say, the scholars haven't finished their preliminary assessment of the site yet, so we're not supposed to venture too far in. Hmm, what's that you got there? Now that looks promising. Uh, isn't that the ironworks symbol? Counterfeiters? Now, now I have you. You are right. What's happening? <laughs> Stay with me. Focus on my voice. Let expanse contract. Eon become instant. Wait, this must be it. The device. Well, this is supposed to happen. Throw wide the gates that we may pass. Oh, safe journey, warrior of light. Find our friends and bring them home. Right! Everything that was asked of us, and still... Still it came to this! You think this is how Sora feels all the time? not yet come.
Ooh. Purple. From endless dreams I awake. Something vague, yet urgent, calls me to action once more. Uh, hello? Rare to meet someone out here who's not a peddler themselves. What brings you into the wilds this time of night? Hmm. What do you mean this time of night? But it's bright as day. Kind of the same response. What do you mean this time of night? <laughs> well, if it ain't the oldest joke in the book. Me granddad, God's rest his soul, used to tell that one to the barman a kicking out toy. And when, pray tell, did we last have a dark night? You rotten old drunk yet, he'd reply. Uh, yeah. Over a hundred bleeding years ago, that's when. <laughs> He's kind of the spitting image of the guy who we rode in with on the carriage to Uldah when we first arrived. You got that look down to a T. I'd almost think you meant it. Ah, got to you, did they? Poor beggar. That explains it then. I'm good, but thank you. Well... I've roads to travel and wares to sell, but you, you'd best hurry along to the town nearby. Just head east through the trees and aim for the Shining Tower. You'll find the place soon enough. It is the biggest settlement for Malms around. Go on now, friend. They'll take good care of you in the Crystarium. Well, off we go. To dizzying heights it rises, the gleaming spire. Its tip threatening to pierce the blinding canopy. There, it will all begin anew, between dark and light. The pure and the corrupt. The one true struggle. I can't believe we finally got here. I'm so excited. Welcome to here. 
Crystal Tower, purple trees everywhere. It's real gorgeous. It's also neat seeing, like, there's a subtle improvement in the uh, cinematics and the cinematography and story presentation, like animation. All these things have taken little jumps forward with each expansion. They've really reached a pretty confident place by now. Stormblood was the same, honestly, but they do keep up in quality a little bit by a little bit. It's come a long way in a decade. Real lonesome out here. At least we got one familiar element. Ah, here's someone. Halt. Every face in this city I know. Yours, I do not. This is the threshold of the Crystarium, stranger, and I am its gatekeeper. If you would enter, you will answer my questions. From where do you hail? Boy, that's a long story. Um... Both true... Silence, probably not helpful. Which of these would take less time to explain? This at least sounds more like a place. Ulda. Do you take me for a fool? No such place exists. Whew, if only. Had you given me an honest answer, I would not have barred your way. We care little here for a person's place of origin, but instead, you chose concealment, and I will not suffer you to pass. That one had eaten. It must have gulped down the whole hand. Ring and all. Hmm. Everything all right, Captain? There you are. Quite all right, my lord. Just a stray sin eater, and a weak one at that. I see. Weak or not, we should be on the lookout for more. But I see you've met my guest. I will escort him to the Crystarium myself, if you've no objections. Another of your mysterious friends, is it? I should have known. Very well. I'll inform the others your guest is to be given the run of the city. Pray forgive my less than cordial welcome. May the rest of your stay with us be a pleasant one. Come with me. I will answer whatever questions you have when we are somewhere more private. Right then, before we plunge into the where's and wherefores, let me first thank you for answering my summons. I had intended to bring you directly to my personal quarters, but I fear my aim was slightly off. 
that you are still able to make the crossing unharmed is a great relief. And so, we come to the question of where. The realm in which you now find yourself belongs to one of the 13 reflections or shards, the first, to be precise, even if its inhabitants are largely oblivious to the fact. As to wherefore, having been awarded the rather grandiose title of Crystal Exarch, <laughs> I, in uh, my capacity as caretaker of the Crystarium, thought to seek the aid of you and your companions. Hmm, are the other Scions here? Great question. Do you have any idea how much trouble you have caused? Also, a very good question, although maybe less pressing. Ah, that is a question with no simple answer. But all shall be explained in due course, I promise you. Not the answer I was hoping for. Let us begin with the glaring skies up above. Here in the first, the world has been all but consumed by primordial light. It began a century ago, by this realm's reckoning. A luminous flood swallowing everything in its path. More than nine-tenths of this star was lost. And the fortunate few who survived are hounded by abominations born of that catastrophe even now. Sin Eaters, we call them. The creature you saw earlier was one such monstrosity. It was to save the first from this menace that I learned to bridge the rift between worlds. That I might call upon the aid of the greatest of heroes. Though it meant depriving a world of its champion, I had to try. For in saving the first, you would bring salvation to the source as well. Uh, but what manner of host harangues his guests in the middle of the road? Let us continue our talk within the Crystarium. Well, okay. for the living in a world all but resigned to oblivion. Each stone was laid with hope, the town itself a symbol, a monument to defiance in the face of death. No would-be hero could fail to answer its call. For who among us does not yearn for salvation? Welcome to the Crystarium. Our new home away from home. And the latest big capital city for us to explore in the game. And here we are. Welcome, my friend, to the Crystarium. Well, thank you. Thank you also for the music and whatever that weapon is. Appreciate it. So, um, I still have a lot of questions, though. The Crystal Exarch has a request for you. Now, a full and frank discussion in the privacy of my study would seem to be in order. 
But I think our conversation would be more meaningful were you first to gain a firmer grasp of the situation here. To that end, I would like you to visit a few of the Crystarium's civic leaders and glean something of this world and its predicament. As you can see, this path will take you directly to the Aetherite, a convenience with which I'm sure you are only too familiar. Being the rightful object of my summoning spell, you should, in theory, be able to reach all the way back along your etheric trail and find a connection in the source, believe it or not. I strongly suggest you complete this attunement before venturing any further. I do love how the etherites look here. After you've done so, walk up the steps next to the etherite and head out to the left to arrive in the crystalline mean. This is where you'll find our collective of crafters and gatherers, as well as their spokeswoman, Catlis, one of the people I should like you to meet. Another is Morin. To reach him and his cabinet of curiosity, you'll want to avoid the aforementioned steps, take the exit on the left, and simply continue straight along and down until you come to the large doors at the end of the path. The third and final person I should like you to meet is Bragi, our man in charge of trade and distribution. He's to be found in the markets, which you can access from the opposite side of the Aetherite Plaza. In seeking out each of my colleagues, you will visit the major districts of the city and hopefully gain a feel for the place. I trust my directions were simple enough? You probably get this a lot here, huh? Crystal clear. <laughs> Very good. I concede the layout of the Crystarium owes more to historic necessity than planning, but I'm sure you'll learn its twists and turns before long. In all honesty, the true challenge may be in finding the right way to approach its citizens. As you discovered during your encounter with the Captain, the people of this world are unaware of the existence of other stars, and will struggle to accept the truth of your origin. That being the case, when they ask whence you hail, as they inevitably will, I suggest you claim to share a homeland with the Crystal Exarch. There is an unspoken rule here about peering too deeply into that particular mystery. Works for me, I guess. When you've finished making the rounds, pray meet me in the large courtyard at the center of town. Until then... Appreciate it. And here we are. Now we have the run of the place. Let's start looking around a bit. Now some of you might be feeling a little bit hazy on terminology that some characters have been saying. Stuff like the first, the source, shards, stars, stuff like that. We've had some points in the main storyline thus far where such things have come up. Uh, we had, back after uh, Heaven's Word stuff, we had that bunch of uh, Warriors of Darkness who we eventually found were from some other star, some other world, like a splinter of this one, uh, where light had taken over and they had tried to uh, be the champions of that world and failed. There was that one, uh, that one kid who showed up in the Rising Stones at one point when we were doing the Warring Triad, uh, fight after Heaven's Word, uh, Unical High, who we found out toward the end was from a different world, uh, one that had been like consumed by darkness and one that we now call the Void, where all of these Void scent come from. Uh, and I think it has come up later as well, maybe in dealings around with uh, Minfilia a bit. I think uh, also this Crystal Exarch, when, we, when he called us in a vision toward the end of the Stormblood stuff also made mention of some of these details. A lot of it's pretty hazy uh, and vague right now, though, so don't worry too much if you feel like, you're, like you've missed something important. They'll explain more as we go. By focusing your senses, you detect the flow of vastly distant currents of ether. Your connection to these energies is faint but stable, and should allow teleportation to etherites in the source. And thank goodness for that. We can make it back home as a player, if we wish. We are not stuck in a completely different MMO world for the duration of this expansion. <laughs> it is pretty, though. 
Anyway, um... The Crystalline Mean crafting area should be up this way, generally. Or maybe... Maybe this way. Which way is it? Crystalline Mean... Okay, it, it is this way. Good, 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 good. I was right the first time. I really like the Crystarium. Gorgeous place. Hello. Rare to see a place so well stocked with goods, isn't it? But not here. I'm going to guess you're new to our fair city? Well, for what it's worth, you've chosen a fine sanctuary. The Exarch can throw up a barrier if the Sin Eaters come knocking, so it's a damn sight safer in here than it is out there. Safer and more civilized, too, thanks to us in the mean. We work together to procure materials and resources, and craft the goods which make city life possible. This is the place to visit if you need a coat mended or a kettle forged. Just don't go thinking it'll all be handed to you on a plate like those Yulmoran layabouts. Here in the Crystarium, we work for a living. Though I see you're no stranger to honest labor. You don't have that whiff of indolence about you like some folk I've met. Still, I can't quite pin down your profession. Where is it you're from? Um, Exarch land. One of the Exarch's countrymen, you say? I see. Well then, I'll work twice as hard to make you feel welcome. Our city wouldn't even exist if it weren't for him, and any friend of his is a friend of ours. It's really quite incredible when you think about it. They say this grand magic summoned the Crystal Tower into existence, pulled the entire thing out of thin air. It wasn't long before droves of refugees began congregating around its base, desperate for shelter after losing their homes to the Flood. And that's how the Crystarium began. At the Exarch's invitation, buildings started going up, and with the help of some curious relics brought forth from the tower, the place gradually expanded into the thriving metropolis you see today. The city stood here for decades now, yet the, el yet the eldest among us swear the Exarch looks exactly the same as he did back then. He is indeed a man of many mysteries, but for all his secrecy he's never yet let us down. So if he, and you, wish to remain silent about your shared homeland, then the folk here will respect your wish for privacy. I am, however, more than a little curious to see any crafting talent you might be hiding. If you've ought to contribute on that front, be sure to come back and visit once you've had a chance to settle in. Just ask for Catless, and I'll find you a niche here in the Crystalline Mean. You can help us keep the cogs of the city greased and turning. Your exchange with Catless has taught you about life in the Crystarium. Indeed it has. And as you have probably guessed, this is where crafters will probably spend a lot of time, and gatherers as well, uh, will probably spend a lot of time in this expansion. I will not be much help on that front, for even though Derman has taken up the culinary arts, he is not especially great at them yet. Certainly not great enough to be of any help out here. Maybe someday. But okay, back to the crystal. And then let's head downstairs and see if we can find this Morin. It's so pretty. Shortcut. And further down we go. Equally pretty down here. Loving the little garden. But I think we are to go a little further. Should probably be attuning to these as we go, huh? Make my life a little easier. There we are. 
Now then, the Cabinet of Curiosity. Our library. Yet another lovely spot. And I believe Morin will be up top. There you are. Uh, excuse me, sir. Are you recently come to the city, perchance? I'm quite familiar with our civic roles, you see, and... Well... <clears throat> what I mean to ask is, have you brought any books with you? A rumpled scroll, even? A scrap of scribbled on parchment? My apologies. Literature is something of an obsession of mine, as well as a profession. Librarian Morin, at your service. And this humble collection is known as the Cabinet of Curiosity. As your powers of perception have likely informed you, my colleagues and I are responsible for curating all manner of tomes, documents, and other vehicles for the written word. As horrific as the loss of life and land wrought by the Flood unquestionably was, the damage to recorded knowledge was no less catastrophic. We few do all we can to preserve what wisdom survived. But tell me, what brings you to the Cabinet today? Looking for any title in particular? Mayhap a spot of academic research? Oh, so you've an interest in modern history. Splendid. A thorough review of recent events can often yield novel perspectives, I quite agree. If you would prefer something visual to accompany the account, then I think I've an illustrated history book for children somewhere. Uh, just a moment, I'll fetch it for you. Oh, yes, please. And here we are. Would you like to pull up a chair? Make yourself more comfortable? <clears throat> On with the lesson, then. I'm just making your day, aren't I? You're welcome. A hundred years ago, or near enough not to matter, villains known as the Warriors of Light slew the Shadow Keeper, the Steward of Darkness. In the wake of this tainted deed, light began to pour into the world as if from unseen cracks. It pooled and swelled without cease, until the day an enormous, blinding wave rose up and swept across our star. We called this calamity the Flood of Light. Everything it touched was leached of life and vigor, leaving not behind but a luminous wasteland. Yet, just when it seemed that all would be lost, a savior appeared before us. The Oracle of Light. She stood twixt us and approaching doom, and by her power did she stay the flood. Thus was Norvrant, and Norvrant alone, spared the fate of Erasure. Tragedy would, however, arrive in another form. From the blasted emptiness descended horrors of strange and terrible aspect to bedevil the few folk who survived. These Sin Eaters were light incarnate, and their fulgent presence stole the night from Norvrant's sky. Even now they circle the remaining bastions of civilization, ever on the hunt for us, ever hungering for our flesh. And thus did the world become what it is. Should you ever wish to hear the tale again, I would be glad to retell it for you. Uh, or if you would rather I speak of other matters, that too would be my pleasure. I should be glad of the company. Your exchange with Morin has taught you about the Flood of Light. And also that maybe Morin's a little bit lonely in here. Once more curious visitors more often. Don't know what I can do about that yet. I just got here. Happy to help all the same. Okay. Now we need to go find Bragi in what sounds like the Trade District. Let's scoot, Dermot. It's a long way. All right. Back at the ether right now. Across the other way. 
should be our next destination. The Rotunda. Lovely. Hey, Bragi. New to the city, friend. The spinning head and wide eyes give you away. Welcome. My name is Bragi. I'm the master of these markets. They give the district another official title, but I'm not in the habit of using it. Too florid by half. In any case, our merchants stock a wide range of equipment, so we should have something in your size. Forgive my asking, but you are a dwarf, yes? We don't get many of your lot coming down from the mountain these days. Um... I'm sorry, did you say dwarf? I'm actually a Lollifel. Maybe I shouldn't introduce a new term to the conversation before everyone's ready. Did you say dwarf? Uh, I? Is something wrong? Now let's see if we can straighten this out. You see those two in front of us? The shorter one is a Hume. And the taller one's an elf. That sturdy individual over there is a Galgent. Whilst the ones with the horns is a Dron. And then you have the large scaly chaps with long tails and a knack for raising livestock. Those would be the Zun. Which is apparently not what you call them. Do the dwarves have different names for all the peoples of the world? Or did you pick up the common tongue in some other far-flung region? Ah, uh, same as the Exarch, huh? Well, that explains it. You don't get much further flung than that. We've had a few of your lot pass through in recent years, and despite their obvious learning, they've floundered over the simplest things. But, not to worry. Should you find yourself confused by the local language or customs, I'll be here to answer your questions. Your exchange with Bragi has taught you about the peoples of the first. So neat, the different races are known by different terms here. And fun bit of trivia, some of them are the names of the races from Final Fantasy XI. The uh, name for the humans in Final Fantasy XI is Hume, as opposed to Hure in Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, what they call the Elizen here in 14, they did just call elves in uh, 11. I don't think there was a dwarven equivalent, but dwarves are definitely a old classic Final Fantasy race that you would uh, encounter in like mines and caves and stuff. Mostly the older ones, 8-bit and 16-bit eras, you know. Anyhow, we have introduced ourselves. Let's go find the Exarch, who should be in this big central square here. Outside the tower. Oh, there you are. Give me a minute. Long distance, short legs. Hello. Well, how did you fare? Did my colleagues help you form a clearer picture of this world and its people? They sure did. In fact, they give me tokens to prove it. <laughs> An account of how the Exarch summoned the Crystal Tower and the city built by the refugees who sheltered there, for one. Also, an account of how the Warriors of Light caused the Flood, which later led to the appearance of the Sin Eaters. And finally, an account of how the races of the Source are known by different names in the first. Yes, it seems you were treated to a most thorough introduction. I understand it was something of a chore, but it was necessary that you grasp these things before we proceed. As for the Crystal Tower's origin, you may have noted that details were sparse. The structure is, in fact, the self-same one you know from the Source, transported to the First in its entirety. It was my first attempt at breaching the boundaries between worlds, something of a trial run for your eventual crossing. And although I do not know which era I tore it from, I do know that its arrival served to set the wheels of fate in motion. Compelling. 
please tell me more. In fact, I guess you'll have to start telling me more next time, because otherwise this is going to run very long. Thank you very much for watching. I'm so excited to be kicking off, finally, this wonderful expansion. It's going to be a grand time that we're all in for. There's a playlist for this whole playthrough down below if you're wanting to watch all of these in order. And uh, I will see you on Wednesday as we continue. Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV, everyone. See you next time. Bye!